my journey and come back from cancer. On Christmas Day, 2012, I rose early to watch my then three-year-old grandson and my daughter open up their gifts. And I knew that it was going to be an unusual Christmas because I was scheduled for an outpatient surgery that very next day. Usually when on Christmas, when I get up, you know, I prepare a good breakfast, and that was not, that was normal for me to do. And I would also prepare a big feast of a dinner. It was our fav holidays are our favorite. But that day, I knew that I had to prepare for surgery that next day. So let me just take you back for a moment. Two months prior to that, on my daughter's birthday, I had an excruciating pain. I awoke about 2 a.m. that morning. And I thought it was just indigestion or gas. So I went back to sleep for about five minutes and I awoke again. And at that point, I was convinced that I was having a heart attack and so I didn't want to waste time. I drove myself about 3.5 miles to the nearest emergency room. And once I got there, I quickly learned that the words, I think I'm having a heart attack, would gain me quick access to a physician. <laughs> After being examined by the ER physician, he determined that I either had gallbladder disease or pancreatic disease. And he said to me, you better wish that it's not your pancreas because it's hard to treat. So just as he said, he did an ultrasound and determined that it was gallbladder disease. And he indicated that I needed to go to a surgeon. So I set up an appointment with a surgeon. And um, mind you, I didn't have that pain but one time. So once I saw the surgeon, he determined that I didn't have to have the surgery right, right away. So then you ask yourself, why would someone choose to have surgery the day after Christmas? I love to eat. Anyone who knows me knows that I love to eat. But there were two reasons. The first was my job. The second was money. So what is it about the job? My coworker was going out on maternity leave that very next month. So I said, OK, this is going to be a surgery um, that will take me to recover about two weeks so I can go out, have the surgery, be back before she returned. And then the other reason, which was a very compelling reason for me, is that if anyone knows anything about insurance, you know, insurance generally pays zero where we pay this much. Well, I had, and that's called out-of-pocket expenses, deductibles, co-payments, co-insurance. So I decided I'd already met my deductible, my out-of-pocket expenses. I don't want to pay any more, so I'm going to have the surgery now. So the next day, when I went in to have the surgery, I learned that my surgeon had to perform an emergency surgery on another patient, which caused my procedure to be delayed for five hours. Now, even though my daughter and my brother became while my daughter became agitated, my brother had to leave before the surgery was performed. I was very patient for some reason that day. And I waited for about five hours because I knew that usually an emergency denotes a life or death situation. So emergency procedures should take priority over elective ones. My procedure ended up being the last one on that day. And as promised, it would not take long. However, I didn't expect to wake up to the words, Ms. Manning, I found a tumor and I am very concerned. One week after receiving the pathology results, my surgeon confirmed that the tumor was malignant, but he saw no evidence of metastases. Overwhelmed with mixed emotions, I felt thankful that the cancer had not spread but fearful after learning that gallbladder cancer has no known cure or effective course of treatment. Besides being rare, gallbladder cancer has a high rate of reoccurrence. 
So six months after agreeing to receive chemotherapy treatments as a preventive measure, an MRI revealed a lymph node that appeared suspicious. I was told that they couldn't biopsy it, that it was inoperable, and you know, I never imagined that it would get any worse. For the first time since the initial diagnosis, I felt hopelessly defeated. Tears streaming down my cheeks, I managed to drive home, unable to sleep that night, I prayed for God's guidance. And after praying, I turned on the television, couldn't go to sleep. So I was searching for a spiritual program. Now, mind you, I never watch commercials. You know, <laughs> never. Someone can ask me about a commercial, I cannot tell you anything about it. So, but that night, as I began to turn the channels, I came upon the commercial about the Cancer Treatment Centers of America. Now that commercial had been playing over and over, you know, while I was going through chemo treatment and, you know, and I would see it in the background, never watched it because really, you know, I just thought it was a commercial. And excuse me for saying this, you know, some of the things that I heard about it, I just said, it's a bunch of crap. <laughs> but, you know, even knowing that, you know, that night I was searching for hope. So I dialed the number. And I got a patient advocate on the other end who demonstrated a genuine concern, calmed my fears, and scheduled me for a second opinion. And, you know, even though, you know, I still felt, you know, it was a bunch of crap, that night I was searching <laughs> for hope. And, you know, and, and she just put me at ease. The Cancer Treatment Centers of America treated me with dignity rather than a statistic. Inspired by the way they use traditional and non-traditional medicine, I wanted them to handle my case, so they agreed. Besides oncologists, the interdisciplinary teams include naturopaths, nutritionists, massage therapists, mind and body consultants, acupuncturists, and chaplains. And you know, I took full advantage of most of them, especially the massages. <laughs> the naturopaths and the nutritionists taught me the importance of making lifestyle changes and the overall impact on the treatment and prevention of cancer. Spiritual gatherings and discussions including prayers led by the chaplains and or ministers encouraged me and provided me with a sense of hope. Now often upon receiving a cancer diagnosis, some people tend to ask, why did this happen to me? I didn't ask that question. Instead, I asked, why did I get a rare cancer? And <laughs> then I followed it up by saying, leave it to me to get something rare. <laughs> Despite the circumstances, that simple but humbling phrase, well, I, let me digress for a moment. After I said that, I said, why not me? And so, despite those circumstances, that simple but humbling phrase redirected my focus towards a journey cushioned with perseverance and purpose. Adversity comes in many forms, including cancer. However, if given a choice, very few of us would choose to experience cancer. Now, although I cannot change the diagnosis, <coughs> I can choose to reach above and beyond my comfort level through perseverance and by continuing to live the life that God, our Almighty Father, granted us or granted me. So unmarried and the sole breadwinner in the household, I had to maintain an income so I continued working throughout the entire ordeal, always equipped with a laptop and a cell phone. I traveled with a portable office and literally worked while receiving chemo treatments through a surgically implanted port. Treatments often began early and ended late, so I had plenty of time to complete a day's work. 
Being able to work throughout treatment enabled me to maintain health insurance, meet financial obligations, and eliminate some of the factors that cause stress. In addition, over the past several years, I had every intention of completing, returning to school and completing my education. However, the workload and travel associated with my career caused it to be delayed. Finally, the time was right, so I enrolled into a master's program, but had only completed two quarters prior to being diagnosed. A friend suggested that I postpone classes until the end of treatment, and I almost did. But I just could not quit after waiting so long to begin. Perseverance took on a new meaning for me as I continue to reach far beyond my usual abilities to keep everything going in the right direction, it kept the focus off of self and created normalcy in a situation that might have otherwise been chaotic. Working, taking classes, both online and in the classroom setting, along with weekly chemo treatments, then Eventually, radiation treatments became a daily routine. The following day, after my last procedure, my surgeon came into the room, and he wanted to know why I was sitting in a chair typing on my laptop the day after a major surgery. I explained that I had an 18-page final paper due <laughs> that next week, and it had already been delayed due to the surgery. He shook his head in amazement, and he said, you must have a lot of faith in me. Without a doubt, he is a great surgeon, but I have placed my faith in the one and only almighty God. Amen. During and after cancer, my life's purpose became apparent due to those things I experienced on the journey, and they led me to my second act conscientiously grateful for each day I live in the present without looking back at yesterday or fast forwarding into the future. Besides several friends who survived various forms of cancer, I encountered many others who encouraged and inspired me along the way. Upon hearing their stories, I could hardly believe that the meetings occurred by chance. Everyone I met related a miraculous story of how she survived cancer, which made me believe that I would also survive. And as a result, I knew that I too would need to share my story with others. Every day when I pray, I ask God to send someone to me who might benefit from hearing my story, and God never fails to answer that prayer. In addition to my career, I work as a volunteer at the Cancer Treatment Center, speaking with patients who are currently receiving or about to receive treatment. We share our stories. We also express ourselves through art and watercolor painting. Although it took three years, I completed an MBA in Healthcare Services Administration last year. And by the way, the commercial that inspired me to seek a second opinion <laughs> featured a world-renowned surgeon. And a couple of months after having surgery, I saw the commercial again. That time I watched it. <laughs> and at that moment, I recognized the surgeon in that commercial as the surgeon who performed my surgery. <laughs> Successfully, he removed that lymph node, and I have remained cancer-free. Thank you.